Hi, this is Ken from the Computer Clan. Yes, my hair is kind of a mess. Yes, I don't have beautiful makeup on my face. Why? Because this is not a formal, well-composed video. And I'll tell you why. I'm gonna do something that I have not done in a long time. And my kitty cat just gave me a little hug. Hi, kitty cat, what are you doing on the set? Anyway, remember some of those old tech videos I used to do either by myself or with somebody else where we got this old crap and we had to make it work together with a bunch of tools and crap? Guess what? This is gonna be one of those times and I'm gonna be all alone. So let's check it out. And by the way, I wasn't joking about my kitty. Hey kitty! Oh, you're leaving? Oh, okay. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm used to rejection. That's okay! So what I got going on here is first, I just wanna see if I can get this external box thingy hooked up to this uh, power mag here. That's a 7500. And I will get that SCSI thing hooked up, so there's a couple things. That's the first one. We're going to see if we can get that external hard drive working. And then there's this PowerMac 6100. Hello, kitty cat. Uh, the 6100 currently does not have a hard drive in it. As you may remember from videos years ago, that hard drive is currently sitting in the SE, I believe. But if we look down here, we have this 7200, which has a hard drive in it, but the computer itself doesn't work. So the computer won't turn on, but the hard drive might be okay. We'll find out. So I would take the hard drive from that piece of crap and just throw it in here because this computer works. So we'll see if we can get that booted up. And I have this extremely elaborate professional wiring system here, as you can see, with cables and whatnot. So yeah, this is pretty good. And we got the video going out to this extremely high def Star Logic panel. It's old. It's really not that great. But hey, it's an LCD. It works. So we'll see if we can get these things working. We'll start with the easier one, which is probably getting the SCSI box to work with the 7500. So come on, let's go take a look. Also, as you may notice, this environment may look familiar. Yes, this is the Real Deal Studio set, but today it's the Real Deal Workbench set, I guess. Uh, I have this thing sitting on a TV table. I know, very professional. Uh, TV tables are normally used so you can eat food in front of a TV, but it's actually used to hold these things up more than food. So, good job, TV table. You're, you're doing you're doing great in life. So, we have this micro net SCSI. I, four gigs. I think this is a four gig system. There's a hard drive in this giant enclosure that's only four gigs in size. SD cards this big hold way more than that. You guys have no idea how lucky you are. This machine, I believe, is from... Oh, if I was guessing, 95. This thing's probably from 95, somewhere around there. And it's a pretty boss system, especially for the time. So let's take a look here. I have SCSI coming out, in case you don't know what that looks like. It looks a bit like, uh, yeah, I can't remove that right now. Oh, maybe I can't. Nope, it's going to stay in there. You're never going to know. Uh, it's basically like USB, but really, really old. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so let's go turn this thing on. We got a power button here and a little funny thing about the button is when I first got this computer Everything worked great, but the stupid piece of plastic that held the button in place fell off Here's what that looked like and that took forever to fix. I couldn't even get it back on because you know, it's so thin I don't have any super glue or any tools. I can really do that. So the button is just sitting in there very Loosely you have to push it to the left if you push it to the right it falls inside the computer and it's Ah, cheap-ass construction. Okay, so, uh, actually, first, we're going to turn this on so we can mount it. And take a listen to this puppy. Where is the freaking switch? Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, listen to how noisy this is. Ready? All systems are go, Captain. That's the fan. And there's the hard drive spinning up. Okay, so, it's kind of like a jet engine. Hopefully you can still hear me. Over all the decibels this thing is outputting through the mono microphone that I'm recording with. Uh, yeah, that's how noisy this thing is. It's noisier than the whole computer. So now we'll press the button and hope that it doesn't fall inside the computer. There we go. We have power up Houston. So now we're going to boot this thing up and see what happens. You know, I must say when I got this system, I thought it would be running like version 7 of the Mac OS or something. But no, the, the previous owner stuck OS 9 on this thing. It was pretty crazy. Okay, turn on. 
Okay, two seconds into the video, we're already, we're already having a problem here, Houston. What do we do? Uh, let's check the power. Uh, negatory, Houston. There's no problem with the power. Yeah, well, I'm going to make this problem wish it never met me. Okay, um, whew. Guess we'll have to fix this. Okay, so I attempted a very elaborate procedure of power cycling. Yes, we're going to turn on the now power cycled monitor, which is ultra high def. Okay, it's still not working. McFly, hello, anybody home? Okay, well, while we wait for this thing to turn on, uh, I'd just like to show you a little something. You remember these things? Of course you do, because they, they're still used sometimes. Apple has dongles sometimes you need to get because they use very high-end compact ports on their Macs today. Um, some monitors will connect right to Mini DisplayPort, some you need adapters for. This was uh, Mini DVI, I believe. Um, and some people are frustrated with that. You know, Apple typically has, like on all their computers, they always have a port. If you want to connect to video, you need a dongle for it. And it's a very capable port, but, you know, most devices don't use it. It's a little different nowadays with Mini DisplayPort. But back in the day, like on the Mac Mini or so, they would put this on there. And no one would have a monitor that fits that. So they had a VGA dongle. Well, you're probably guessing, oh, back in the 90s, that wasn't a problem, right? Wrong! It was the same situation. Here, I'll show you. As you can see on the back of that... Oh, this microphone may be stereo after all. <laughs> Heck, I don't even know my own camera system. Anyway, as you can see, the uh, VGA cable there connects to an adapter, which connects to DB15, I believe that is. That's a different video connection, so... Yeah, there were even adapters back then. It's, it's like Macs are known for doing that. And in a way, that's good, because the ports have more features than a standard VGA connection, but... A lot of people still needed adapters if they didn't have Apple monitors. So yeah, a little bit of eye history for you there. Beautiful. Okay, you can stop looking at that now. Okay, that's enough. Well, Houston, we may have a problem with the uh, StarLogic display here. It seems to not work. It's just camera shy, no big deal. Of course, it, you know, it turns on just fine when I do the test. Um... But see, the fun thing about these videos is none of it's staged. I just set everything up and tested the monitor. And of course, then it worked, and then on camera it doesn't, so... Okay, I'll be right back. I am going to get a Samsung display. Mm-hmm, not a valid sponsor. Right, so I went to my friend Sam's house. He sung a song for me, and then he gave me this Samsung. And as you may notice, yes, it's dusty, but hey, like I said, this is not really a composed presentation, yes? So... This is the Samsung Sync Master 2243BWX. Rolls off the tongue, right? I connected it with a VAG cable to the rear end of the uh, power Mac. Couldn't think of a joke there. All right, so let's turn on that annoyingly loud disk system. Where is the switch? Great engineering. There it is. All right, that was my bad. Initiating power sequence, and then we'll turn on the uh, power Mac here and see if we can get a boot up. It's running OS 9, and once we get this mounted, we'll take a look at the drive, and then we'll get a little tour of the power Mac here, and then we'll go into the fun part, which, come on, this, this has already been fun enough. I mean, we've already had a tech fail. I mean, the monitor wasn't even part of the mission, and... <laughs> It already busted, and so now we got this one. Yeah, I'm afraid that one's finally dead. I tried every rule in the book. I mean, tip in the book. Rule of thumb in the book. Thumb tip in the book. Whatever whatever the hell you want to call it. So, what do you do while you're waiting for this thing to turn on? You yeah, want to talk about the weather? I was reaching over and just, I pressed the little source button on there. It's all touch-sensitive controls. That's all I had to do. It could have been working, and I just didn't know it because I didn't... Press the... See, this is what I deal with. This is why I wanted to document it for you guys. I rarely do this kind of thing because I rarely have anything to fix. I mean, mostly everything I have works. Oh, great, a blank error message. Well, as you can see, this video is going down. Oh, hey, look, there's actually something there. Our clock is not set right. I don't care. We're going to press return. Oh, the keyboard's not... I'm going to call my friend Jack Daniels. I'll be right back.
Well, to quote one of my favorite YouTubers, Ada Blossy, I will say nay nay to a keyboard. I will use instead this genuine, official, out-of-date logo computer clan mouse pad. One of a kind. It'll, it may be worth something someday. I'll sign it and sell it at a, a noisy auction. Get it? Instead of a silent auction? Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use this input pointing device, which is tangled up in a rat's nest of cables. Stand by. All right. This Apple intuitive pointing machine and I will put it on the mouse pad and direct the cursor and click thing. Gosh darn it, it doesn't even work on here. Okay. Alright, as you can see here I set up a beautifully composed shot of the work environment so you can see me click on this intuitive pointing machine while you see uh, pictures on the windshield which is another name for the screen. Alright, so I'm going to try to navigate the... Oh gosh, this no, this mouse isn't working. Come on, it was working just a while ago. Is the ball dirty? See, not, nothing's worse than a dirty ball. Okay, well, it's not working either. Um, whew, I only got like 700 other mice, so we can figure out a solution to this, really. I'm at a bit of a loss here, ladies and gentlemen. What do I do? Maybe if I just take this off and... Oh, gosh. It's a prosthetic testicle. That's the problem. Well, I don't know why I don't even... Oh, there we go. We got, we got a little bit of cursor action there. Let's see here. Let's reattach the uh, restraining device to the ball holder unit. The scrotum, if you will. There we go. Okay, so it still works kind of... Maybe my pants work better. Nope, that's a negatory. Uh, let's try the other side of the mouse pad. Okay, the other side of the mouse pad works great. You know, the side that's supposed to, you know, stay on the surface actually works better with this old mouse. All right, network time error. Don't give a crap. Oh, my gosh, this hard drive is labeled... Is that Jilly Willy 3.9 Jiggies? That's hilarious. So it's a 4 gigabyte drive, like I said earlier. Jiggies. I'm going to call gigabyte... Gigabytes. <laughs> gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! I'm going to call it gigabytes Jiggies. For now on, and nobody's gonna stop me. Uh, let's see, we got, uh, looks like we got Office 98. Um, oh gosh, there's a system folder on here. This external drive may be bootable. Oh, there's only an appearance folder in there, so it's a, I guess it was a migrated system. So, yeah, oh, we got a file labeled Peter's address. Well, I won't go into that, especially on camera. I, I have more respect for privacy, I don't work for Google anymore. Internet Explorer 5, Netscape Communicator, jeez. Network browser. I can actually take this thing online. Here, I'll show you the... I'll give you a little tour, or to quote Ada Blasi again, a guided whore, of what the Power Mac has in store. Let's take a look. So let's just take a look at this freaking mother of a machine here. It's got freaking everything on here. Just take a look. So, we have our composite and audio jack -roonies. I guess that's what those are called. We have a, some serial and ADB things. That's what those holes are. I'm, I'm being very non-technical right now. Uh, this is the video thingy, I believe. That's DB15. This is the SCSI connection, which is where we're connecting this extremely loud hard drive to. Uh, but then check this out. We got some... There's some uh, Ethernet doohickeys uh, somewhere uh, around here. I'm looking at the camera screen. Yeah, I think I'm pointing at one of them. <laughs> but then there's more... There's a card in here that has, that looks like Ethernet. Um, it might be base 10. So yeah, these are the expansion areas, and I, I don't know if it came with one of these. I think it did, actually, because this was a much more higher-end system um, in the 90s. So it has all these extra ports and performance on the inside. But yeah, we got, this thing has a USB card in it. But this stupid cable, get out of the way. This thing has a USB card in it. So universal serial bus, like we have on systems today, except this is... Probably the much older version. So this thing can work with USB peripherals. I don't know if that was a standard option. I think that was installed later, but uh, yeah, I could test that out later. That's pretty cool that this old system actually is compatible with a USB card. So yeah, this thing's this thing's nuts. It's got everything on here, and it's no slouch. You know, I've tested this thing before, and uh, yeah, works great. Okay, uh, the screen went black, and it won't come back on. Hello, hello. Bueller, McFly. When all else fails, press the power button and flip the switch. 
Okay, I don't prefer to do it that way, but uh, I couldn't control the system because the display didn't come back up. Okay, so conclusion for this part. We have one potentially dead monitor. Uh, the power button on this 7500 doesn't work fully. And the SCSI drive works great. It's just noisy. So, there. Conclusions. We have to have some kind of educational vocabulary crap in here, don't we? So, that's what you do in a science report and shit. So, good to go. Now, we're going to get to the fun part where I get to pull out my stools. Tools. And put a hard drive from a machine like this into this bad boy. Because to reiterate, the other Power Mac does not work, but the hard drive might. And this thing doesn't have a hard drive. You turn it on, it does nothing. It has no disk in there. So... Let's take a look. Okay, so now we're going into the fun stuff. Take a look at this, yeah. I got the best toolkit in the world. I call this my huh, mustard and ketchup collection. Yes, um, they are screwdrivers. Yeah. Nope, 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 stay there. Yep. Uh, uh, no, 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 ah, I can't, I can't do anything. Yeah, uh, some are yellow, like mustard, and some are red, like ketchup. So that's where I thought of the incredibly creative name. You can use it. No big deal, I'm not copywriting that. So I will use these tools to uh, attempt to make stuff happen. Now, if there's one thing Apple's famous for, it's using screws that nobody has a screwdriver for. Mm -hmm. So, I went out, got some tools, put them in my eye tools box. Ah tools. Even got some stickers on here, you know it's genuine. Open her up. And then we got this bad boy. This is a something. Let's take it out of its condom containment thing. Now, what this thing is, it's a little twisty doohickey that, um, oh, it's, yeah, it's a little twisty thing. And I can put any type of bit I want on here. So I can put an 8 bit or a 16 bit. No, I'm kidding. If those aren't enough, I have a whole nother surgical kit. Which is full of, oh gosh, it really does look like a surgery kit. <laughs> it's got a whole bunch of twisty things and magnifying glass even. I mean, this, that could be useful for burning ladybugs while you're waiting for computers to boot up. And a little pinchy thing for, I don't know, removing a person's nose. And another twisty thing. And once again, magnetic attachment. We could put any kind of bit on there we want. Um, yeah, so if none of these work, then that's when we give up you know your parents say never give up but that's a bunch of bullshit you gotta do it all right so another thing apple is famous for <laughs> seriously another thing apple is famous for is making computers that are impossible to open uh, i don't know if they hired chinese puzzle box makers or something but if once again if you watch some of our old videos you'll see time lapses of us opening like an se or a color classic and they are a bitch mainly because they're so compact this thing however is a larger desktop it's more of a professional system so done all right that is how easy it is to get into this thing and uh Oh, that doesn't look good. That just fell off. Um, yeah, that happened with the other one, too. This thing is kind of old, in case you haven't caught on to that. I have no idea where this... This I'm going to have to review the video just to see where this fell from, but... It doesn't matter. This system does not work. This is the goodie bag, if you want to call it that. Uh, oh, you got to be kidding me. It's on these ridiculous rack systems. The screws are probably from beneath. This is going to be a treat. This is what these videos are all about. They're about... Just insanity. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to take a look at that. So, this is what we want. The goal is to get this 700 megabyte internal disk out of here and throw it into the uh, the Power Mac over here. This is a disk from, well, the firmware is from 1994, it says. So, okay, let's have some fun trying to remove something from a, an old Mac, right? Because that's really easy, isn't it? Mm hmm. Okay, so this may be kind of easy. I mean, sometimes, like, I don't know if I mentioned this, but sometimes it's easy to get in these. Like, it was easy to remove the case, but removing this might be the hard part. But sometimes it's thought out well. It looks like there's a switch here. Like, this whole thing is like one entity, unit, demon, whatever you want to call it. It's locked in here. But if I move this switch, as you can see, it starts coming out. And there's, like, another switch over here. And then look at that. It just lifts right out. 
I mean, that is so cool. I didn't know that's how these worked, and now it's getting stuck on something, so. Yeah, I want to make sure to feature that when I... Oh my gosh, it's a hinge system! Oh, what? That's, that's genius! Oh, there is a fan in here. I never heard of fan. Maybe it's just that there's a, there's a fan right here. That's... Holy cow, this is so cool! I've never seen a computer like this before, have you? Can you, like, put this out and, like, have it hold itself up like a car could? I don't know. That is crazy. Well, I just learned something new. Um, on my Vintage Apple Tours video, when I do it, I'll have to make sure I mention that, because that's really cool, because now I can get right to the RAM. Holy crap, this thing looks like it's maxed out with RAM. Uh, power PC, the heat sink's right here, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, so the fan. Oh, that's genius. Again, I think this fan cools the power supply unit, but it also sits right on top of the heat sink to cool the processor, so there's fewer fans and less noise. Wow. Okay. This may be a lot easier. So, man, this thing is dusty on the inside. I'll probably have to clean my camera <laughs> after I'm done working around here. But check this out. There's another door here. So this is where... Oh, this has got to be the video card. Um, can I remove this? It might be screwed. Oh, no, oh, no, it's not. Okay, Um. so this is the video card. No, oh, no, this is the networking card. My bad. This is networking, not video. False alarm. Uh, the video card's probably somewhere... Nowhere. I, I have no idea, actually. Uh, okay, so this is networking. Yay. Oh, hey, there's an Apple logo in here. You probably can't see it from the great angle I put you at, but... If you can, it's right there. The ISO may not allow it. Holy cow, it is dusty as heck in here. It's like a... a mummy's anus. Did I just put a bad vision in your head? I apologize. So that's cool. I'll just keep this for... I don't know, in case the other one breaks. <laughs> okay, mates. I have discovered an amazing little thing. So I... Occam's razor. That's the principle that says the easiest solution to a problem is usually the correct one. I spent a few minutes fiddling with it, and then I was like, you know what? How about I just unplug everything first? Took out the SCSI and the power, and you can't see it, but right behind there, there's a little flap. Flip it up and it slides right out. And it's just restrained in by four Phillips screws, guys! Phillips screws, this is great! I can actually use tools that humans have. Like, holy cow, that is awesome. Um, back in the day when Apple let you get inside their computers, like, they don't, they don't do that that much anymore. They do it for the Mac Pro, which is great, but, and maybe like a few other machines, but dang, that's nice. All right, let's take that thing out to dinner. Okay, got the screws out. You may be wondering why I didn't show that in the video. Why? Who cares? The screws. All right, so we take the uh, railroad tracks off. And here's the hard drive. Standard. Standard Apple computer hard drive. It seems to be, yep, the quantum whatever. <laughs> it, it'll fit. I'm pretty sure it'll fit. This, is, this looks like the same model, except a slightly higher capacity than what was in the 6100 over there. So this should be rather simple, right? This part has been going smoother than the rest of the production, and so far, the only problem was that monitor <laughs> and me dropping shit, but hey. Now, we're gonna take this and put it into this, because this thing is fast, but it has nothing to be fast with, so we're gonna put that in here. Also, I have no idea what's on this hard drive. I wanted to boot it up, see what's on it. This computer didn't work though, so we're gonna find out what's on here. Could be porn, could be, ooh, all the addresses of secret NSA agents. Why am I touching the chips on the back? That's terrible, I could ESD them. Electrostatic discharge, that's the acronym, right? All right, let's get it in there. Power Mac, 6100, yay. Uh, this should be easy to get into. Ow, mother of pearl, I pinched myself. Okay, um, there. See, so that one's easy to open too. If I am not mistaking, the hard drive, the hard drive goes right here. It's the same kind of like railroad track thing. Um, I'm gonna have to find a way to get this out. Cause um, I may not, oh, hang on. Oh, hey, check that out. Wow, that is easy. All right, it looks like there's two screws missing, um, but I could borrow some from the other system. So basically, all we're gonna do is put the hard drive in here somehow, and 
Hope it works. Here's a question. Where's the SCSI connection? Um, we got power. We need something for the data, though. Oh! There's not one in here. Okay, I guess now I'm going to have to go back to the other system and surgically remove the SCSI. Good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. And just in case there was anyone that wanted to see me actually fiddle with the screws, well, fine, I'll screw you. Just kidding. I'll screw this in on camera. Hooray. Okay, so as a bit of a status report here, we got the thing on the railroad tracks, as I like to call them. It should just slide right in. Yeah, it, it kind of slides right in. Um, well, eventually it'll slide in. But right now, that's not the problem. Like I mentioned earlier, we have the power for the hard drive, which is this right, this white thing right here. Uh, but we have no SCSI. We have no way for the data to actually connect to the, from the hard drive to the motherboard. So, I need to find a cable or get a cable out of the Power Mac over there, the old one. What am I talking about? They're both old. The uh, other one. Okay, so here's the problem here. I want to take the SCSI cable here and put it into the Power Mac over there since this computer is basically trash now. It doesn't work anyway. So I want to remove it, but, well, first of all, even if I do remove it, it's very long, and I don't know if I can fit it into that machine because that Power Mac is a lot more compact, but we'll try. I don't want to be splicing wires and crap tonight. But here's the thing, it goes back here, and if you lift this up, it, it comes out the other end here. So it connects to the motherboard here, and it kind of runs up through the metal chassis, runs behind the PSU through these brackets, and then comes out here. I literally can't get this out unless I find a way to remove the power supply, which... It looks like there's a screw here that I can remove, but I don't want to remove the cover... I can't get the plastic end of the SCSI ribbon cable through this piece of metal. You know what, actually, this metal here might be part of the PSU base. If I take the PSU out, I might be able to sneak it through there, but I don't really know if I want to go fiddling with a power supply unit. Good gosh, this place is getting kind of messy. But anyway, we got the uh, power supply out. The screw did seem to be a bit stripped, but uh, this giant screwdriver did the trick. So, uh, the power supply... We just lifted it right up, and we were able to get the ribbon cable out of the 7200. Now, I'm going to attempt to plug in this end of the ribbon cable to the hard drive, and then probably like this end onto the motherboard, or the yo motherboard, as some people would say. And I guess I'd roll this up. Is that what I'm going to do? I guess, I guess I'll just roll it up and like fit it in right there. And there's not a lot of heat in this area, I'm assuming. There's like not a vent or anything. Oh, there's an etched Apple logo right there. I never noticed that. So yeah, that's the plan. We'll see how it works. Okay, so it appears that the cable could, I think it could just sit on top. I mean, I'll try to fold it up a bit and get it in there, but it's plugged into the, your motherboard and into the hard drive or the soft drive, or the medium hard drive, or the firm drive, however you prefer that. But anyway, yeah, the computer seems to be all hooked up on the inside. Now it's just a matter of getting it kind of cleaned up and organized in a way. Um, this thing is totally falling apart. I don't know if this is just really cheap plastic or just years of it sitting somewhere just wear it out, but the hinge system broke. Uh, some other plastic things are just chipping off, like hardly with any pressure applied. So that thing is just falling apart. <laughs> We're going to get it all organized, closed up, and plug it in. And then the fun part, the moment of truth where I turn it on and it doesn't work, I rip my hair out, and we do this all over again. Yay! Stay tuned. I actually forgot, there is a fan on this computer. It's underneath, and it's part of that power supply there. So, yeah, when I thought there was no fan, I was wrong. There is a fan, but I think it's really just for the power supply. There's a little bit of ventilation on the side of the PSU there. I'm not sure if it goes to any other part of the computer because the other main source of heat is under that cover. That's where the processor is, I believe. But that has its own heat sink. So I'm just trying to find a way to make sure when I put this cable in here, it doesn't cause any heating issues. I mean, the original cable that was in here, I believe, was pretty long as well. Actually, I'm, I'm sure it was really long because we used it in our SE and we had to roll it up a lot. So I think it was just as long as this. 
Yeah, I don't think there will be any heating problems. I just want this thing, you know, burst into flames. That'd be pretty cool, though. All right, let's uh, put it together, close it up, turn it on. Hopefully, it works. Okay, so as you can see by this incredibly professional uh, job here, I have the ribbon cable, and I have... Th this is connected to the hard drive and to the, your motherboard. And from the power supply unit, we have the Molex, Molester cable, whatever it's called, uh, running underneath here into the hard drive over here. And I just need to make sure that the cables don't touch the heat sink too much because there is a heat sink under here. But uh, the heat sink is, seems to be far enough away from the molester cables. So now that should sit there. This should come in here, just sit nice and neat. Um, this laying on top shouldn't cause a problem. Sometimes it's just a little bit hard to get the case on. But yeah, I guess that's as good as we're gonna get it right now. So let's see if it works. Well, that seemed to work enough. The case is mostly on. There might be a little bit of wiggliness, I guess if that's a word, but hey, that's okay. This thing is usually just used for display anyway. Probably won't even be on that much. It'll just be nice to have a hard drive in it for once in a couple years. So I'm gonna plug it all in and all that stuff and see if this thing works with that new hard drive in it. So let's take a look. Okay, so I was setting up the monitor with the PowerMac 6100 and it turns out the 6100 uses a different type of video out than the 7500. And I forgot about that. So I found yet another video adapter to go with another video adapter to plug in the VGA cable. So we'll be going from this connector, forgot what it was called, to this connector, forgot what it was called, and that will be adapted to VGA. Once again, things don't really change much, do they? Yes. Apple still has video dongles. But hey, whatever. Okay, so after all that, we have everything together. To recap, we took a newer, larger capacity hard drive from this 7200 over here and put it into this older 6100, which used to have, I think, a 550 megabyte hard drive. Now it has a 700. And for a couple of years, it actually didn't have anything because that hard drive was in the SE. So now there's a hard drive in here once again. No more external booting, huh? And we have the monitor all hooked up, so let's turn on the monitor. All right, we just performed some significant surgery to our patient, Doctor. Will he live? Let's find out. Ready? We're going to hit the switch. It should go bling. It should do stuff. It should turn on. It should work, right? Right? Go! No, it didn't. Oh. It did. It did. It's just not... Hello? Is it on? I heard a tunk. Hmm. Well, it seems as if that hard drive does not work, but that's okay because it was worth a shot. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, I turned it on. I thought it wasn't working. Uh, it made the bong noise, then the fan turned on, and I went to go listen. I couldn't hear the hard drive doing anything, uh, but then it turned on. It got really loud. Now, yeah, that hard drive is much louder than the one that used to be in here, uh, but yeah, it turned on and then turned off, so I don't think it's actually functional, but hey, it was worth a shot, right? Well, it looks like we'll just be taking that out. No big deal. It was still fun to fiddle around on the inside of that other computer, so um, I don't know. Should we give it one more try? Maybe we should. One more try. That time it turned on immediately. Okay, so the hard drive seems to be... Oh, no. See, did you hear that? It spun down. Yep, I'm afraid it spins up, but then it just spins down. It's not able to be recognized. Um... Or it was broken. You know, maybe it was broken in the other computer. Um, we're not getting a video signal, though, either. Let me try the... Source. Nope, we're not even getting a video signal. Oh, that's odd. I didn't do anything with that. Huh. Well, thumbs down on that. But that's okay. It was still fun to fiddle with. So, 
Yeah, that was an attempt. Um, maybe I'll put the hard drive in an external enclosure. I have a couple working ones that I could swap the drive with. Uh, but the point was to get uh, the internal system working, so maybe I'll take the disk from that external drive and put it in here, but that disk is noisy. Plus, that disk might get warm, because that disk needs a fan <laughs> in that enclosure. So I'm a f And it's not specifically an Apple drive, so I don't think I want to put it in this really compact system. I don't want anything overheating. Well, it was worth a shot. It didn't work out so well, but hey, it was still fun to see me screw up, right? Hey, at least the, uh, the other system worked, and that external hard drive worked, so yeah. Okay, the problem may lie with these uh, little ports there. I believe those are for jumper cables. Some hard drives need jumper cables to function properly. I don't think the original hard drives that came in these Power Macs had those, so there's going to be none of those on the motherboard. So this type of hard drive may be incompatible. So it's able to turn on. I have no other hard drive that can go in there, so for right now we're just going to conclude that we can't do anything. But at least uh, the other stuff worked right, except for the StarLogic monitor. That shorted out. Well, anyway, thanks for tuning into this. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, I was having a bit of an afterthought here. I was putting this together, and I was thinking, you know, the drive probably didn't turn on because those little cables weren't plugged in, like the jumper cables like I was talking about earlier. And I thought I had that problem with a different kind of external hard drive before, but it wasn't an Apple product. It was third party. But then I remembered, wait a minute. When I unplugged the hard drive from this computer, there were no cables on there. So I thought when it was in here with no cables, that's why the drive wasn't working. But I don't remember there being cables in the first place. So... That probably means something else is going on why to cause the hard drive to not work properly. That's just an afterthought. I'm kind of done fiddling with this for right now, but if I get it working later, I will definitely do an update, like I did with the SE. So, thanks for tuning into this. Let me know what you thought about this fun, somewhat educational, stupid, funny experiment, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. This is Ken from the Computer Clan, signing off. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. In addition, check out our largest production to date, it is now available, you do not want to miss this. And if you want to see more content from us, or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.